parents, my mother, my father, did not suffer and die to give me an education to slight, oppress, or discourage my people. Because whatsoever education I acquired after their sacrifice of over 300 years, I tell you for the salvation of the 400 million black people of the world, and the day when I forsake my people, may God Almighty say there shall be no more light for you. <laughs> unequivocally rejected the racist assumption of much white American Christianity, namely that God had created a black man inferior and that he had intended Negroes to be a servant class, hewers of wood and bars of water. The life predicated my view of man on the doctrine of Imago Dei, all men regardless of color are created in the image of God. Now from this premise for the equality of all men and the brotherhood of all men, the biblical injunction of Acts 1726 reminds us that he created of one blood all nations of men that dwell on the face of the earth. I was most interested in brotherhood within his own race. Because if Negroes are created in God's image, and Negroes are black, then God must in some sense be black. <laughs> if the white man has the idea of a white God, let him worship his God as he desires. We have found a new ideal. Because whilst our God has no color, and yet it is human to see everything through one's own spectacles, and since the white people have seen their God through their white spectacles, we have only now started to see our God through our own spectacles. <laughs> the everlasting God, God of Father, God of Son, God of Holy Ghost, the one God of all ages. That is the God in whom we believe, but we shall worship him through the spectacles of Ethiopia. For 250 years, we have struggled under the burden and rigors of slavery. We were maimed, we were brutalized, we were ravaged in every way. We are men. We have hopes, we have passions, we have feelings, we have desires just like any other race. The cries raised all over the world of Canada for the Canadians, of America for the Americans, of England for the English, of France for the French, of Germany for the Germans. Do you think it unreasonably we, the blacks of the world, should raise a cry of Africa for the Africans? <laughs> the Negro is a man. We represent the new Negro. His back is not yet against the wall. We do not want his back against the wall because that would be a peculiar and desperate position. We do not want him there. It is because of this that we are asking for fair compromise. Where the Belgians have control of the Belgian Congo, which they cannot use, they have not the resources to develop now the intelligence. The French have more territory than they can develop. There are certain parts of Africa in which they cannot live at all. So it is for you to come together and give us a United States of Africa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are not going to be a race without the country. God never intended it, and we are not going to abuse God's confidence in us as men. We are men, human beings, capable of the same acts as any other race, possessing under fair circumstances the same intelligence as any other race. Now Africa's been sleeping, not dead, only sleeping. Today Africa's walking around not only on her feet, but on her brains. You can enslave what was done for 300 years, the bodies of men. You can shackle the hands of men. You can shackle the feet of men. You can imprison the bodies of men, but you cannot shackle or imprison the minds of men. Lie <laughs> down, black men, and dig. Reach up black men and women and pull our nature's knowledge to you. Turn ye around and make a conquest of everything north and south, east and west. And then when you have wrought well, you will have merited God's blessing. You will have become God's chosen people. And naturally you will become leaders of the world. And as you bow down to the white man today, so a lot of races bow down to you and call you a race of master because of the superiority of your mind and your achievement. Because no race has the last word on culture and civilization. They do not know what we are capable of. They do not know what we are thinking. They're thinking in terms of dreadnought, puzzle ships, aeroplanes, submarines. You know what we're thinking about? That is our own private business. <laughs> so give us credit for being able to use our minds. And with people becoming conscious of themselves, determined to use their minds, you do not know to what extent they can do. Liberate the minds of men and ultimately you will liberate the bodies of men. We love the white race, not for social fellowship, but for the common brotherhood of God until we should live. What satisfaction can anyone get in being happy and see his brother wallowing in filth, dirt, and disease? How can you be happy living in luxury and your brother's living in disease? And then when you try to help the one out of the disease, the subtle culprit talks about disloyalty. Black men of Carthage, black men of Ethiopia, of Timbuktu, of Alexandria gave the light of civilization to this world. Ethiopia shall stretch forth our hands unto God. And princes shall come out of Egypt. <laughs> the classes, nations, races have been quite quite for over four centuries. Who was merely born abuse, insult, humiliation. 
whose forbearance can only be compared to the prophet Job, has likewise lifted his proud head and raised it up to God's skies and cried out, I am a man, and this and a man's chance and a man's treatment in this world. But I shall teach the black man, I shall teach the black man to see beauty in his own kind and stop bleating his skin and otherwise looking like what he's not. Back in the days of slavery, race mixture mis miscegenation had occurred because the African woman had no protection from the slave master. Therefore, there is no need today for black people to themselves freely continue a practice that smacks so much of slavery. <laughs> I had to drop a bomb for the honorable, the honorable Marcus Garvey, Marcus Mosea Garvey. Fire! 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 All praises, all praises to our ancestors, for we are the sum total of our ancestors and we stand on their shoulders. Drop a ashe in the chat. Drop a ashe in the chat. I see the Ma'anian family is in the building. Peace and love to the Ma'anian family and to everyone under the sound of my voice. Shout out to EY Pelly Movement. I see new Black World Orders in the building. My E5 twins are in the building. The Queen Mothers are in the building. The Beautiful Mind. Lay low. Love. I'm thinking about all the other Queen Mothers. Virgo Venom. So all the Queen Mothers are in the buildings. I see our warriors. I see our Babas. I see our scholars. Salute to Dr. Craig Samuel. I see you, Baba, in the building. I see Loban is in the building. I'm trying to think who else. I don't want to miss anybody else. Who else? Brother Jabril, Africa is in the building. Peace and love to you. I see Cody is in the building. Peace and love to you. Badu is in the building. Peace and love to you. And then I see peace and love. Peace and love to you. So many. Ayoka Afu is in the building. Peace and love to your family. If I butchered your name, please forgive me. Loban is in the building. Peace and love. And I see the infamous African is in the building. Family, take a moment out to thumb up this video right now. Thumb up this video, family. You know the way the YouTube algorithm works. The more you engage the video, meaning if you thumb it up or you, you write comments, it begins to cir circulate on social media, Ashe. And so let's thumb up the video right now, family. Also share, share the video, each one teach one. And so in the age of information, how can you each one teach one? Well, you can just click a button and just share it, right? And then you just shared it with hundreds of people, right? So let's share this video up. Let's pack the house. Let's get 100 people in here. We got 100 people in here for Bob Imhotep on Wednesday, and I know we can get another 100, maybe 150 in here tonight. Tonight, Bob is coming on. Our Bob, our master teacher, the co-founder of PLM, Pan-African Liberation Movement, a father, a husband, educator, community activist, will be joining us shortly to talk about the origins of the Race First Movement, really a historical breakdown of Race First and its meaning, okay? And so I just titled it The Origins of the Race First Movement. But you already know Bob is going to come with the heat. He's going to give us the historical breakdown of race first. And as you know, he has a race first of 21st century race first movement going on, going on. So shout out to those brothers and sisters, you know, who are involved in the race first movement that is happening all over. It's not just happening in Baltimore. It's happening on a national level and also on a global level. So shout out to Bob Imhotep for, for fueling this race first movement in the 21st century. Family, before I get started tonight, I do have a few announcements to make. Just a couple before I bring before I bring Bob on, and I'm going to share my screen really quickly, guys, really, really quickly. All right. Make sure that you're in the building, in the building for the Black Student Science Fair going down in Brooklyn, New York on June the 10th. Uh, it's going to start at 2 p.m., and I believe it's going to be over around 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. But make sure, family, that you're in the building. It's the, all, the first all-black science fair in Brooklyn, New York. Make sure you're in the building. Uh, if you're in the DMV, hopefully you're up to traveling. Let's get there. Let's pack the house. Let's expose our black babies' family to STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, engineering and mathematics. I'll say STEAM, science, technology, Engineering, I say art and mathematics, but this is going to be STEM. So it's going to be science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And so, family, let's make sure that we expose our babies. Uh, Brother Q Butter told me he's looking to have over 150 children in the building. And so we appreciate Brother Q Butter. And shout out to him spearheading this event. And if you can't make it, family, I'm going to drop the link in the chat for you to donate. Let's donate, family. Here's the link right here. I just dropped it in the chat. I want you all to click on that link and send $10. You know, 
right now and I heard that Cubud is in the in the process of purchasing STEM kits for children so that, could, that so that they could participate. He also made me aware that there are some students in Brooklyn who have never been exposed to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics due to underfunding. They just don't have the resources. And so this brother is taking money, he's buying kits, he's uh, paying for the venue, he's flying people in to participate. I mean, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, just an amazing experience for our babies. And so if you can't make it, just click the link and shoot some money. $10, $20, $30, just shoot some money, okay? All right, and I dropped the link in the chat. Also, family, also, and let me pull this up. Ah, Make sure that your children are in the building or have a seat at the UACI STEM Camp 2023 all right, which is a, a Conscious Ingenuity in partnership with the Uhuru Academy or Uhuru Academy in partnership with Conscious Ingenuity, however you want to say it. But we are in partnership with each other. We form, formed a partnership with each other to bring you a, a, an amazing uh, STEM experience. Uh, Baba uh, Amin is going to begin each session with giving our children an African uh, African history lesson on STEM, centered around STEM, our contributions to the establishment and expansion of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And then for two hours, our children will be involved in, in, in cybersecurity, coding, and artificial intelligence. And family, right now, and I'm working with the curriculum developers to create the lessons and the lesson plans and the slides and the activities. And I can tell you, your child will be in for a treat. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you're not going to find a camp like this you're not going to find a camp like this. I mean, you can try, but you won't find an African Center STEM camp on this level. You'll find it, but not on this level. So family, I'm going to drop the link in the chat right now. Make sure that you sign up. Make sure that you sign up. Hold on. Let me give you the right one. I just dropped, look, I just dropped the link to the science fair in the chat. And so let me grab the right link. And this is a link to register your child ASAP in the UACI STEM camp. You see the camp is going to begin on June the 20th. I actually have a meeting with Baba I mean on Saturday. I think we're meeting Saturday or Sunday. I believe Sunday to discuss the UACI camp. And so you may want to hurry up and secure your child a seat because we're going to get ready to close registration soon because we have to order equipment, right? And get prepared for June the 20th. June the 20th will be here before you know it. All right. And so we offer a virtual component and we offer an in-person component. The in-person uh, component will be offered in Columbia, South Carolina. Shout out to the Uhuru Academy and the National of South Carolina. And so it will be there, all right, in, in person. So if you're in Columbia, South Carolina, if you're in the South, I have some friends who are driving down, they're driving their children from Atlanta to participate in this camp. So if you're in the South, if you're in North Carolina, South Carolina, ATL, Atlanta, Georgia, whatever, shoot down to Columbia, come up to Columbia, South Carolina and give your child an experience of a lifetime. And if you can't make it in person, get your child a visual, a, a virtual seat, okay? A seat in our virtual space. We only have 15 slots for the virtual component and 15 slots for the physical component, okay? And once those 15 slots are filled, that's it. So I dropped the link in the chat and I will do it again, family. I will do it again. Make sure that you get your child in the building for this, okay? Because I know a lot of us pump our fists. We, we, we rep the red, black, and green, but we got to be, that's about nation building. We're talking about black empowerment and nation building. You can't do that without science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics, okay? So we got to be about what we talk about. Lastly, family, if you did not watch, Baba Imhotep's last lecture, last presentation on African manhood family. I'm going to drop the link in the chat right now. And I want you to click on this link so that it's in your history. Okay. And watch it later. Matter of fact, what my son is going to do is he's going to sit down and he's going to watch the presentation and then he's going to, we're going to discuss it, but he's also going to write a one page paper on what Baba Imhotep discussed uh, in the presentation. So I'm going to drop the link to this powerful presentation in the chat. Make sure family that you click on it. Okay. And last but not least family, I'm going to drop Bob Imhotep's cash app right now, before we bring him on, I want right now for you to take out your cell phones, help me cash at Bob. He's going to drop a lot of powerful information tonight. And we want to make sure that we show our appreciation. We want to make sure that we reciprocate. So let's indulge in ma'at. 
let's engage in my art, let's practice my art, and let's practice, namely, the principle of reciprocity. Ashe. And so you see his cash app is on the screen, family. All right, dollar sign, Baba Imhotep. Easy. All right, family. So again, I'm getting ready to bring on our Baba, our warrior, our scholar. Peace and love to you, Baba. How are you? Peace. I'm um, well on yourself. I'm doing all right, Baba. I can't complain. Let me cut my light on. I think that's better. Okay, let me cut the light on. I'm doing all right, Baba. Doing all right. Looking forward uh, to this discussion. I see the Ma'ani and families in the building, Baba. Uh, oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I see your message right here. The National Race First Convention of 2025. Baba, talk to the family about that before we get started. Yes. So <clears throat> the Race First movement and all the Race First rallies that we've been doing since the year 2020 is really leading towards this big national race first convention. And at this convention, the objective is really to facilitate a process by which those of us who um, feel that we are doing race work can kind of get on the same page surrounding specific concepts and we can agree upon what our ultimate objective should be. I'm saying that it should be African sovereignty, but we all need to be on, on board with that. And so we can begin to work. Um, the race first realities have been pushed on the basis to say, let's get organized. We really want to bring about a lot of organization. And as I delve into this presentation tonight, you know, it, it'll be become very clear, you know, why that organization is need, needed, because we'll see that the um the predecessors of this way of thinking were organized and they pushed the organization. Absolutely. And, and you know, Baba, what I love about what you just said, and you said it a few times, organization, that's what you said. And that's what's really missing, you know, in our community, being organized. I remember Dr. Takai Kilimanjaro said, you know, we just out organized. People are out organizing us, Baba. And so we need to get organized. So everybody has these ideas and everyone wants to do this work. But we have to we have to get organized. It has to be structured. Right. It needs to be, you know, orderly. So anyway, Baba, I do appreciate hearing that. And you said it a few times. And even when I'm with you, one of your chance, you say race first. Everybody say, let's get organized. And yes. so, Baba, can you just I just want you to kind of reiterate or break down the importance of being organized. So everybody's doing this work. You got this African Center School. This, but but I want you to talk about Baba. Just why do you emphasize organization so much? The importance of organization, Baba. I well, I I emphasize organization to the degree because I understand that organization builds power. Mm. Organization builds power, and organization is what outlives people. Mm. So if the people can become organized and build the power, what becomes a force in motion, then no matter what happens to the individuals involved that force in motion will continue and it's going to have the impact that it's designed to have. Furthermore, organization, it maximizes output and it facilitates, you know what I'm saying, progression. It makes progression easier Absolutely. and it maximizes our output. Mm, that was beautiful. Just what you said. It makes, say that one more time, that last line. M maximizes output. There you go. But the one before that, you said maximizes output. It makes it easier. What did you say? Yeah, it, it, makes... says, um, it facilitates progression. It makes it easier and it maximizes our output. Love it. Love it. That's powerful. Family, take a moment out to thumb up this video. It's three things I want you to do right now. Thumb up the video. Thumb it up, thumb it up, thumb it up. Share the video, family. Each one teach one, right? As, as we learn, right? As I learn, we learn, right? Or as we learn, we learn, right? So as all of us are learning together. So each one teach one. So share the video. That's the second thing. And thirdly, family, make sure while Baba is going in and he's getting ready to go in, you are in for a treat. Make sure that you send a cash app to dollar sign Baba Imhotep. Or if you don't have cash app, I'm going to put his PayPal email address in the chat, which is ifatiyu at yahoo.com i'm going to put that in the chat so let's make sure that we bless baba and that we reciprocate baba you can go ahead and share your screen baba yes man thank you thank you thank you yeah. dr craig said let's get 50 more viewers in here he says share family let's share let's share let's share 
Brother Jabral said, yes, Baba, organize, organize, organize. It's the solution to all of our issues as African people and the only way to gain African sovereignty. I say, brother. Did it come I say. Up? No, not yet. And there, Dr. Craig Samuel, he's put his PayPal, he put Baba's PayPal address in the chat. And uh, yep, Baba, now you just got to bring up your presentation. Just go to your presentation where you can see it and put it in present mode. And then I'll share the screen. All right, so it's on now, Baba. Hold on one second. Baba, just uh, get rid of hide. So just click hide. There you go. And so, family, his PayPal address is on the screen. I fatty you. It's at yahoo.com, Dr. Samuels. It's at yahoo, not Gmail. It's at yahoo. All right, Baba, you have the floor. Yes. Um, as always, it's an honor being here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to give a special thanks to everyone who have joined the show. So as you can see, I'm titling this Race First, Centering Race for African Sovereignty. But as always, before I start my presentations, I'd like to just let everyone know that my intention is never to hurt, harm, injure, or insult anyone in any shape, form, or capacity. However, I move at the dictates of the ancestors, and I will deliver nothing but the truth as the truth come through me as it pertains to this particular topic here tonight. So let's get started. So Race First, Centering Race for African Sovereignty. So we're going to start here. We're going to start with Martin Delaney. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through a series of individuals. I'm going to read a few of their quotes and just show how these quotes and how their thinking was a singular thought process. So this Martin Delaney, we can look at the year of the birth and the year of the death. Because I want to put it in perspective with Marcus Garvey, who was born in the later parts of the 1800s. So Martin Delaney, born May the 6th, 1812, January 24th, 1885. Situated as we are in the United States, many and almost insurmountable obstacles present themselves. We are four and a half million in numbers, free and bond, 600,000 free and 300 and a half million bond. We have native hearts and virtues, just as other nations, which is their pristine purity, purity are noble, potent, and worthy of example. We are a nation within a nation. So Martin Delaney was the first that conceived and said, we were a nation within a nation. He said, our race is to be redeemed. It is a great and glorious work. And we are the instrumentalities by which it is to be done. But we must go from amongst our oppressors. It never can be done by staying among them. So starting early with Martin Delaney, I didn't go back to um, Paul Cuffey, but you know, Paul Cuffey also thought about, you know, moving Africans out of the USA. But I wanted to start with Delaney because Delaney was thinking in terms of nationalism, because at the core of nationalism, therein you find what is known as race first in the core of nationalism. So he understood early on that we had to move away from these people. And he also understood that we were in fact a nation within a nation only if we understood and saw ourselves as such in terms of being organized. Every people should be the originators of their own designs the projector of their own schemes and creators of the events that lead to their destiny. Our policy must be, and I has it nothing in promulgating it, nay, without this design and feeling, there will be a great deficiency of self-respect, pride of race and love of country. And we might never expect to challenge the, res challenge the respect nations. Africa for the African race, and black men to rule them. Now we've heard that before, right? We heard that, we heard Garvey saying that. We heard Garvey echoing these thoughts. Um, and I want to, us to see that and understand that. The desire for African nationality has brought me to these shores. That last quote, he's in Liberia. He's in Liberia and he's speaking at a conference in Liberia and he's stating his intentions. And he's letting them know that the reason I'm here on the African shores is because I'm searching out and looking for the desire for not for African national nationality. In this time period, what he meant and what they were speaking about when they speak of the African nationality is African nationhood. Nationhood is what he was thinking about and what he was conveying at the, in this particular meeting. Then we have Henry Holland Garnett, born December the 23rd, 1815. Delaney was born 1812. 
Men and women, descendants of Africa, our ancestors were distinguished for their wisdom in the arts and sciences. If you would imitate their good example, you must be strangers to the intoxicating cup. During this time period, when they was pushing the immigration movement, they also was pushing what is known as the temperance movement. They was against African people, black people, using the European poison to intoxicate themselves. They had a big movement going on in the 1800s around that. And that's what he's speaking of into this, this, in this instance here. He's saying that our ancestors was distinguished for their wisdom, the arts and the sciences, and this is what we should imitate. That good example. We shouldn't be drinking, smoking, using heroin and all the things we're doing and popping pills. It's not good for the work that needs to be done. He goes on to say, self-help, this principle is invincible. Regard it either in a moral, physical, or intellectual light. My heart leaps with joy as I behold my long-suffering people laying aside their old garments of dependence and entering upon their own work. Self-help, self-reliance. Self-help, self-reliance. These principles show up again in Garvey. Henry Highland Garnett once more. The basis of the society and ulterior objectives in encouraging immigration shall be self-reliance and self-government on the principle of an African nationality, the African race being the ruling element of the nation, controlling and directing their own affairs. The African Civilization Society was an organization that Henry Holland Garnett established. Article two was implemented in this particular society when they brought Martin Delaney into the organization. So when Martin Delaney came into the organization, he, uh, he also asked that we implement this particular article because Delaney was the hardcore Black nationalist coming out of the 1800s. So when he came into this organization with Henry Highland Garnett, it was, it was through his urging that this particular article be incorporated to make it plain and clear that we're about African nationhood, the African race, and the African people are going to be the ones that's going to be running this nation. Alexander Grummel, 1819. Henry Highland Garnett, 1815. We had Delaney, 1812. I want to draw this out this particular way. Alexander Crumble, who spent 20 years in Liberia, he says this, it seems manifest to me that as a race in this land, we have no art, we have no science, we have no philosophy, we have no scholarship. Individuals we have in each of these lines but mere individuality cannot be recognized as the aggregation of a family, a nation, or a race. He's speaking within his organization and he's laying the basis for the need of the organization to develop the type of work that needs to be developed for the African people here in the USA and abroad. He goes on to say, to transform and stimulate the souls of a race is a work of intelligence. It is a work which demands the clear induction of worldwide facts. It is a work which will require the most skillful resources and the use of the scientific spirit. Now you heard the word science come up again and we know God we put science as well. He goes on, seeing that the American white mind in general revolts from Negro genius. The Negro himself is duty bound to see to the cultivation and the fostering of his own race capacity. And we see the overemphasis of race in all the quotes thus far because race is the driving element. Race is the driving element. Race is the principle around which the work that they are doing is centered. 
He adds, let us therefore call our skillful and energetic brethren to come to us and share the suffering and the glory of saving Africa. Let us stand on the beach and on the hillside and back into, and back into them in all lands to come and participate in lawful duty and painful but saving labor and to aid in the restoration and enlightenment of a vast continent. This is when he's in Liberia because he was there for over 20 years. Believing that all men hold some relation to the land of their fathers, I wish to call the attention of the sons of Africa in America to their relations and duty to the land of their fathers. It is the duty of the it is the duty of black men to feel and labor for the salvation of the mighty millions of their kin all through the continent, all through this continent. So we have these race men that's connecting with Africa and understanding that it's about sovereignty. It's about nationhood. Nationhood is running through. It's the things that's running through the thought process. Race relations, race upliftment, race progression. It's the centralizing principle. Edward Wilmot Blighty, born in 1832. We talk about 13 years after Alexander Crumble, we get Edward Wilmot Blighty. We need, in order to carry out the great work, men of, men of, enlightened, men of enlightened minds, of enlarged views, of high toned character. My desire to enlarge my education arises from the interest I feel in the Negro race, and my great anxiety is to labor with increased efficiency to promote and accelerate that progress. This again took place in Liberia, because although Edward Wilmot Blyton is, is from the Virgin Islands, he spent a significant amount of time in Liberia. And he expressed this point there, looking, looking to the brothers and sisters in the USA, he recognized then and realized that the work that needs to be done requires a type of development in the workers we couldn't just keep move using thinking that it's enough to just want to or we need to do something we got to mind and do something he understood early on that we need developed men and women here i speak of men i'm i'm adding women we need the, the developed amongst us to do this work because the situation is highly complex it's highly complex it's not as simple as we think it is it's not as simple as we think it is. That's the reason we've been in it for as long as we've been in it. So he says that his desire is to enlarge his education because he want to do the work for his people. He goes on to say, we must as a holy and solemn duty labor to benefit our country. We must cultivate pride of race. We must have faith in the Negro race. He's in Liberia speaking to a, a congregation of learned men. But he's scolding them. He's trying, to, he's trying to help to elevate their consciousness to a higher level to understand that, no, this race, this race work, we don't have a choice. It's what we must do. The African has no superior among the races and is and is in advance of some because he realized that even in Liberia with blacks and stuff like that he still ran into people thinking that you know black and Africans were inferior he ran into you know um the the issues between the the quote unquote mulattoes the lighter ones and the darker ones so those same issues that we have here he experienced those issues there so he knew he had to speak to the receptive Africans, the Africans who was willing to do the work to help them better understand like, no, there is no superior to us. And we are advanced of some of the ones that's out there that's portraying that they are better than us. He had to bring that awareness to the Liberian scholars or you know people that was doing the work in that particular time period. Have to, and, he, and this, 
this quote right here is in reference to blacks in the United States of America. Because when he came to the USA, he saw the, 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 the mistreatment, the dirt and all was taking place and the junk and everything that we was contending with, and we was fronting with, and he, he was in the midst of that, he saw that. So he said, half the time and energy that will be spent by them in struggles against caste, if devoted to the building up of a home and nationality of their own, would produce results immensely more useful and satisfactory. So he felt like most of the work that, you know, some of our brothers and sisters probably was doing in, in, in the USA around, you know, this issue of trying to be seen as, you know, what we call equality. It, it, it was futile to him because for him, see, race and caste and class intersect. They weren't in the same. So all the struggles that was being put forth, he felt and understood that it made more sense to just struggle and fight to build your own home here in Africa. That was his thinking. Let me, for, let me forever be discarded by the black race and let me be condemned by the white if I strive not with all my powers, if I put not forth all my energies to bring respect and dignity to the Negro race. He was totally and 100% committed. I would real mark blighting is called by some, um, it, it's, it's a terminology, pan-Negroism. Um, it's a terminology that Dr. W. E. Du Bois used in the late 1800s. Um, and some say that he, Edward Wilmot Blyden, is the father of pan Negroism in terms of his thinking. When you get into his thinking, his thought processes, ideals, it runs real deep. He um, was one of the ones who understood the necessity of culture, and he pushed culture real hard um, because he knew that we had to elevate our people. And one of the ways to elevate a people is to help them to understand the beauty and the glory that they already have, that they descend from. Bring them their culture. Help them understand their culture and how to apply their culture. You, in that instance, can transform everything about their people. Ever will more blighty. An African nationality is our great need. We shall never receive the respect of other races until we establish a powerful nationality. We should not content ourselves living among other races simply by their permission or their endurance. We must build up Negro states. We must establish and maintain the various institutions. We must make and administer laws. We must have governments. We must have legislation of our own. We must build ships and navigate them. We must ply the trades, instruct the schools, control the press, and thus aid in shaping mankind. Nationality is an ordinance of nature. The heart of every true Negro yearns after a distinct and separate nationality. Can you not hear Garvey in here? Can you not hear Garvey in here? If you know Marcus Garvey, you study Marcus Garvey, you just heard Marcus Garvey. If you know Marcus Garvey, if you read Marcus Garvey, you read the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey, if you read Message to the People, if you read anything about Marcus Garvey, you've heard Marcus Garvey in these quotes within these men, these race men, the predecessors. Henry McNeil Turner. Instead of black being an abnormal color, a color to be despised and made the badge of degradation and infamy, if it is any color at all, it is the primordial, most ancient, original color of mankind. Yet my interpretation may be greatly at fault, and my conclusion is wholly absurd. But scientific analysis undoubtedly make black the base of all colors, and the black man, therefore, a, prim a primitive man. By primitive, he don't mean it in the context of Europeans, of meaning less or inferior. He mean prim primitive in the sense of being first. Blackness is much older than whiteness, for black was here before white. Chaos floated in infinite darkness or blackness, millions, billions, quintillions, and eons of years before God said, let there be light. During that time, God had no material light himself and was shrouded in darkness. He's qualifying the beauty of blackness. And like I say, if you heard this right here, you heard God. The Negro has no flag to defend. There is
there's not a star in the flag of this nation out of the 40 odd that the colored race can claim, nor is there any symbols signalized in the colors of the flag that he can presume to call his. You hear Garvey again, sentiments echoing through Garvey. A government and nationality of our own can alone cure the evils under which we now labor and are likely yet the more to suffer in this country. You hear Garvey again, back to Africa. We wish to tell the young men and women of our ways there is as much, there is as much future for the Negro in this country as there is for a frog in a snake den. Once again, and this is Henry McNeil Turner. This is what he was saying in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Pushing for immigration back to Africa. I am startled at the times, I'm startled at times at the ignorance displayed by many of our prominent colored men upon the real condition of our race in this country. Don't you see it's a white man's government? And don't you see they mean at all hazards to keep the Negro down. Then why waste our time in trying to stay here? Why not do as the white settlers of this country did? Leave and build up a country and government of our own and have our own Negro president, governors, judges, congresses, legislatures, ETC, yes, kings and queens if we choose. Then, and not till then, will the nation of the earth respect us and admire our manhood and genius. Do you not hear Garvey again? This is Garvey. So I'm showing you the, the precedence. This is what Garvey looked to. This is where Garvey went to. Because the spirit of truth, it moves from vessel to vessel to vessel to vessel. And we got to understand that all great minds stand on the shoulder of greatness. We have to understand that and get out of the mindset of being petty in our thinking and stuck like Dr. Harry P. Newton say, as ideological stagnant idiots. Get out of that stage. Now, this is Herbert Harrison. He was born on April 27, 1883. December 17, 1927 is when he transcended. He said, it is necessary to insist on this point today when the Socialist Party of America has secretly subsidized both a magazine and a newspaper to attempt to cut into the splendid solidarity which Negroes are achieving in a response to the call Racial necessity. Hear me? This is Herbert Harrison, who was on the scene in the earlier parts of the 1900s, 19, 1908, 1909, 1910, 1911, doing race work. He said, while they were refusing to, dip, to diagnose our case, we diagnosed it ourselves. And now that we have prescribed the remedy, race solidarity, they come to us with their prescription. Class solidarity. As always, someone want to always try to leverage class against race. And oftentimes we fall for it. But like I say, like, like ever will Mike Blake understand, caste, class, and race intersects as it relates to black people. As it relates to black people, class, race, and caste are one and the same. And we have to understand that. Henry, I mean, Herbert Harrison understood it and all the other men that I outlined understood that. He say, we say race first because you have all along insisted on race first and class after when you didn't need our help. He's talking to the socialists, the white socialists, the ones who have always tried to co-op black nationalism. They've always tried to co-op black nationalistic thinking, black nationalistic energy have always been sought after by these white fake radicals pushing fake socialism. And some of us fall for it. But Herbert Harrison didn't fall for it. He even debated them on the issue of class. He put race first against class and beat in that debate. Go look it up. Don't take my words for it. Look the work up. Now this is Garvey, born in 1887. So we see Garvey was born last of all of them. And Garvey say, in a world of wolves, one should go on. And one of the most powerful defensive weapons within the reach of Negroes is to practice a race first in all parts of the world. So what I want us to understand is that, you know, race first can always be around when we understand the, the essentials of it and the importance of it. 
But it makes no sense for us to always get in our feelings and get upset when you hear someone else saying race first, right? And if you listen to any of the lectures that I've done, I've always said that, you know, I, my introduction to race, my first introduction to race first was from reading Dr. Tony Martin's book, Race First. But as I evolved and grew in the knowledge and came across and learned about all these other great men, I see and understand exactly where Garvey studied at and who he studied from. It doesn't detract from Garvey. Garvey is great. Garvey did, he did wonders. Garvey will always be the Honorable Marcus Garvey. No one is here to trump that. I'm here to enlighten us, to help us to understand that we are standing on a reservoir of golden men and women that have done race work and have come in the same theme, in the same likeness, and in the same image of the Honorable Marcus God. Garvey goes on to say, he say, insist on a campaign of race purity. That is, doing everything moral and social within the race. See, listen, moral and social, doing everything that's right in the race. Close ranks against all other races. Close ranks. That's what God was talking about. He understood that the same, the same way Herbert Harrison understood. Let's not get caught up in letting everybody, you know, try, try to uh, um, mesmerize us into believing that it's this quote-unquote space for everybody to be with us. Close ranks and get the work done. He says that we believe in the supreme authority of our race in all things racial. In all things racial. In a racialized society, everything is based around race. So therefore, when it comes to us, we put us first. We centralize us. We prioritize us. That's what God is talking about. That's what God understood. Marcus Garvey again. Everything must contribute toward the final objective of having a powerful nation for the Negro race. Negro nationalism is necessary. It is political power and control. We just got finished reading that. With Edward Wilmar Blyden. You know, Martin Delaney. We are a nation within a nation. You know, I stand here on this source for looking for Negro, African nationality. Right? Same thing, Negro nationalism. The highest expression of this independence is in the sovereignty of a nation. So God be understood sovereignty. The same work thing that they was talking about. God, be. now we have reached the point where the entire race must get together. Whether we are light, yellow, black, or whatnot, there is but one thing for us to do. And that is to get together and build up a race. Right? To build up a race. Because all other people are already organized around race. I don't care what we say. I don't care whose philosophy and ideological perspectives we want to take on and argue their positions. The world is organized around race. I don't care what you say where race doesn't exist. We're the only ones that's having that discussion. Right? And we don't even realize how the argument that we put forth is futile. We say race do not exist. Race is a, co a social construct. In that instance, when you say race is, you are validating the existence of it. Race is a social construct. So, yes, it's a social construct. And we will take it as a social construct. We will organize around it as a social construct. And we will push ourselves forward as a social construct. We have no problem with that. That's, that's, that's not an issue with that at all. You know why? Because we're supposed to look to our history. Look at our story to see what worked for us. If you look closely enough, you see it work for us. Whenever we made major strides forward, it's always when we organized around race. The same point that Herbert Harrison was making. When we organized around race, we made strides forward. And that's what we have to get back to. Garvey again, no race is free until it has a strong nation of its own. Its own system of governing, its own order of society. Never give up this idea. Let no one persuade you against it. It is the only protection for your generation and your race. Hold on to the idea of an independent government and a nation as long as other men have them. As long as white men have one, the China men have one, the Jap has one, as long as other people have a nation and a government independent, then we should forever be striving for ours because as long as we don't have it, we are at a disadvantage in this, this um, wicked world. A world of wolves and God to say our only mantle is what race first consciousness right? 
Racism peoples are only safeguarded when they are strong enough to protect themselves. And that is why we appeal to the 400 million Negroes of the world to come together for self-protection and self-preservation. We do not want we do not want what belongs to the great white race or yellow race. We want only those things that belong to the black race. Africa is ours. Martin Delaney said what? Africa for the Africans. Delaney said it. Darby, this is a day of racial activity when each and every group of this great human family team must exercise its own initiative and influence in its own protection. Therefore, Negroes should be more determined today than they have ever been because the mighty forces of the world are operating against non-organized groups of peoples who are not ambitious enough to protect their own interests. Now, let's talk about that. See, group interest is organically linked to what we call political consciousness. So for any group of people or person to be political, then he or she must understand that the drive of his or her politics is what's best for the group. That's what political means. So when one is political, your politics can be exercised or executed in many different arenas. Case in point. So if you're a doctor, and yet you must be political because all things are political because all things in this particular society serves the interests of some group. So it's incumbent upon each and every one of us, wherever we are, to work in the interest of your group. When you don't do that, you are placing yourself at a disadvantage as well as your group because the people that you are around, you can rest assured that they, that they think, speak, and act in the best interest of their group. That's what it means to be political black man and black woman. So if you want to run for mayor's the mayor's office, if you want to become a senator or a congressman or a congresswoman, if you want to become the president, you need to understand that the reason you seek these offices is so that you could gain access to the resources and the power endowed within those offices to leverage it at the expense of your people. That's the purpose of it. There's no reason for a black man or a black woman to become the mayor of any city if they're not going to use the resources of their office to advance their people. There's no reason. Race first is at the core of black nationalism. I said that earlier on. I wanted to be clear about that. At the core of black nationalism is a race first principle. These are just some suggestions for practicing race first. I'll run through them real quick and I'll keep it moving. I wanted to add this in here because I want us to think a little bit about what we can begin to do. Always defend the honor of your race. Always date within your race. Always aspire to emulate the greatness of your race. Always demonstrate uncompromising loyalty to your race. Always look for excellence within your race. Always favor your race. Always hold your race in high regard. Always support your race. Always work to uplift your race. That's something that each and every one of us here tonight can begin to do if we are not already doing it. If you're already doing all of these, then great, you and I are on the same page. If you're doing some of these, then add the other ones in there. If you're, not, if you're not doing any of these, then make sure you look into this right now and you start doing all these right here. Because these things right here, if we all do these things, they they begin to do what? They begin to bring us closer together. Race first. The time is now to prioritize around the protection, preservation, advancement, and sovereignty of the black race. This can be best executed by prioritizing race. We must elevate race to make it central to our cause. For the dynamic of race is vital to sovereignty, black power. Thus, organizing and mobilizing black people around the dynamic of race will prove to be of great benefit. Organize, organizing us around race. Now, I mean, let me put this in here because I know how, I, I understand enough about how the Europeans work and how they have caused some of us to think that I know when you hear me say organize around race, we automatically think about the bank. I don't know about that, Bible, man. You can't trust. I can't trust anybody. I don't know about organizing around the race. So you need to know that when I'm speaking to us, I'm not referring to any bad elements. Bad elements is not factored in this equation. I'm saying that those of us that say we conscious, that say I'm a Pan-Africanist, I'm nationalistic, that say we all these things, I'm saying that if you're so conscious, then we should be organizing and mobilizing together around race. That's what I'm saying. I'm not worried about the bad elements right now. We'll deal with them once we get, get together. Those of us 
that's running around with the 13 letter names. You know, those of us that's running around saying we the high priestess and we all the mamas, the Bibles, that we the, the judgments, the master teachers. I'm saying those of us that's professing to know what's going on. Then we should be organizing and mobilizing around race because if we know what's going on, we know that every time we organize around race, we move forward. So this is for us. So I don't need anybody to, to say, I don't trust anybody. Don't trust the bad elements. I'm, I'm okay with that. But we should be trusting those of us that we know that's doing the work the way we're doing the work. We got to build organization. We have to build organizational capacity. Right? We just can't be individuals all the time to do this work and think we're going to get to African sovereignty. It's not going to happen that way. What is race first? Now, this is my definition of race first for the race first movement. But it's functional, it's operational, and it's something that any, each and every one of us can take, we can adopt it, we can utilize it, because it's on point. So what is race first? Thought and behavior that places the social, political, and economic interests, spiritual well-being, and overall material survival of the Black race first to facilitate African sovereignty. So I'm saying that we should think and act in a desired manner that places our social affairs, our political affairs, our economic interests, our spiritual well-being, and our overall survival as a people first. That's how we should be thinking. We shouldn't be making any decisions and doing anything that doesn't factor all of us in the equation when we make the decision. If you are a father and you have a family and your family, and you say you're conscious, so therefore your family is a part of the black race, you shouldn't be making any decisions that's going to jeopardize that family. And if you're undecided about what decisions that need to be made, then you should be able to communicate to someone. Now, I'm not saying that in every case, you know, you're not going to make decisions that may not get the best results. Because sometimes you're going to believe you're going to move in good spirit. But I'm saying that some of the decisions that we see some of our people making are clearly bad decisions. And it jeopardizes the family. It jeopardizes the organization they're part of. It jeopardizes businesses they're part of or institutions. We can't move like that. That's not race first. Race first places our interest first. That's what this means. Why race first? Anything other than race first facilitates race murder. The social, economic, political, cultural, and spiritual demise of the black race. Race first is logical. It's natural. It's represented throughout nature. In fact, all other racial groups place the well-being of their race first, even at the expense of other racial groups. So we don't understand this piece right here. We want to forever be struggling and colliding with one another. If we don't understand that race first is something that's natural, that it's an instinctual thing that has been put to sleep within us. Because when you watch any other life form, you watch them behaving that way. You'll watch the roaches roll together. You watch the ants rolling together. The bees roll together. The hyenas roll together. The lions roll together. The tigers roll together. Now, yes, they have their own little infighting or beefs, no doubt. But in terms of other species, no, nah, they're rolling together. And that's us. That's what we need to come to understand. That we're not wrong for rolling together. We're not wrong for supporting us. We're not wrong for making sure that my, your son and daughter bring home a black man or a black woman. We're not wrong for that. That should be, they should be encouraged to do so. They should be reared in such a way that that's what they automatically do. Put us first, build us up first. Think about us first. That's what this is. That's why we say race first. African sovereignty. African sovereignty translates into African power. It is the capacity to exercise authentic self-governance, the ability to, arch to architect and defend one's own social, economic, and political reality and live according to one's own cultural norms. So this is just a brief definition of African sovereignty. African sovereignty is, is, is broad, but I wanted to put something brief that we can grasp to begin to build from to understand that when we say African sovereignty, we're talking about total control of Africa, but not in a dilapidated state. We talk about the total control of Africa and the reliance totally upon our own human and natural resources to push Africa forward in the ability to defend what we have. 
Race first consciousness is indispensable to African sovereignty. And African sovereignty is what we are seeking to achieve. Achieving it will require the correct consciousness to direct the correct motion. That is, motion towards African sovereignty. This is our ultimate objective. All of the race work that we are doing in the 21st century must be geared towards African sovereignty. All of the race work. Anyone doing race work does not, for African sovereignty, the work is futile. Right? So if you just got a little school and you say, my school is just, you know, all I want to do is educate some children here in my city and that's it. Right? It's futile. If that school and that curriculum that you're using is not linked to African sovereignty and the children that you're supposed to be educating don't know that they need to leave your school and take their place among the other race men and women of the world to push for African sovereignty, then you have successfully miseducated them children. Conclusion. Race first is a declaration. It's an attitude of mind. It is simultaneously a social stance, a political position, an economic philosophy, and a world view. When we say race first, we are declaring that socially, black people are our principal concern. Politically, black people are our principal concern. In terms of economics, black people are our principal concern. And our world view projects from an authentic black experience. Blackness is the basis from which we assess and engage all other racial groups. You can follow me here, Instagram, Facebook, and this is the cash app that um, Dr. Maud Ali put up. Baba, check the private chat real quick. Check the private chat real quick. Well, stop sharing your screen first. <laughs> and, then, and then check the private chat. They'd be like, it's private, but it's right here. Baba, showing it on. Oh, Baba, you, oh, you didn't show it. Okay, here you go. Stop. There you go, Baba. You good. Yeah, check check the private chat really, really quickly. And um, and family, right now, um, I, do, I did see some comments in the chat. Uh, shout out to, I don't know if it's brother or sister Cody. Brother or sister Cody. Um, Baba asked uh, about the references for your presentations. Um, the references were shown for Garvey, but when you were showing the quotes for oh. other other people, they were wondering where did you get the quotes from, and so I told them that I would ask you. So, um, I actually it's, uh, it's so so yeah that, that I, I do have a slide for it, um, and I think I, I probably just came out too quick. But, okay. it, but but I had a slide with all the books on it. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So, so, so what you want me to? Uh, I'm trying to think how I can, how I can um, <laughs> brother Cody, brother Cody said, "Where's the document? What's document?" I said, "I asked Baba." So, Baba, you don't have the slide with you. You don't have the slide on your computer that you can show really quickly, or no? Yeah, I got it on here. So just go back to go back to reprint, represent, re um. Yep. Present. Just the same. Yep. The same steps. Present. Yep. 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 Yep, yep. And so, family, let's drop a bomb. I got to drop a bomb for Bob. He killed it tonight. Where's my... Fire! 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 Family, we got to give it up. We got to give it up for Baba. Our Baba, our master teacher, founder of PLM. And I saw John in the chat. He said, I got to get in contact with PLM of Baltimore. So you know how to reach him, family. Make sure that you reach him. He's on all social media platforms, family. And so, Bob, I'm going to put it on the screen. And there, there go the references right there. I see them. Well, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Got it. There you go, family. So, Cody, there you go. You wanted the references? There you go. They're all the books. All right. All of the books. Bob, the one on the bottom left corner, which one is that book? The gray one. Right uh, here? Yes, sir. So, this is actually, it's called um, Edward, Edward Wilmot Blyden. Okay. All right, so it's the name, his name, his name. Yes. Okay, beautiful. So there you go, Cody. There's Baba's references. Family, there go his references. So you see he didn't grab it out of the thin air. You already know Baba's Thero. So let, <laughs> you know Baba's Thero. He ain't make it up, right? <laughs> right. Wow. You know, Baba got probably, oh my gosh, you're, I, I'm pretty sure your library looked look like Baba uh, in Wally Moo. I, I walked his, his house and 
his whole hallway, Baba. It's like everywhere you go is books. The whole hallway is is huge. It's filled with books. And so I'm pretty sure if we, we go to Baba's house, it's probably the same situation. Even when um, Give Thanks, I had an opportunity to travel to Ghana. Uh, and, and I walked in W.E.B. Du Bois uh, house. I thought that I was a book collector until I walked in there. And so you see that he was an avid reader. It was books all over his place, um, in his spot in, in Accra, in Ghana. Yeah. And so a lot of people, you know, it's crazy, Baba. Um, you know, as I continue my journey and, you know, learning and connecting with different people, you start seeing the same habits amongst like minds. You know what I mean? This sort of the same characteristics when you connect with people on this path, on this journey. And so I appreciate, but so Baba, load up before I say that, Baba. Family, let's drop it. Let's drop some fire symbols in the chat. Let's drop some hand claps in the chat. Let's give Baba his flowers. Baba just gave us a powerful presentation. And he summarized a lot of it for us, right? Like he, some of these people we heard of, some of these people we didn't hear of. You know, he he showed you where Marcus Garvey's ideas, a lot of those ideas where he got it from, because Marcus Garvey read too, you know, and he, yes. you know, he was a reader too. So you see where a lot of his, his ideas and information came from family. And so I love this presentation in that Baba gave us, you know, an overview, right? You know, of, of the historical breakdown, which was phenomenal. So I see your stuff and I see your fire symbols in the chat. I'm getting ready to show Baba all of your love. You know, your divine compliment is in the building. Mama Ife is in the building with the red, black, and green, and the black fist in the air. I see, look at this. I'm just showing you the love, Baba. J-Way, real truth and power. He said, great presentation. I see you, John. John Hargrove said, race first, Dr. My Ashe. I see Dr. Samuels. He said, another powerful presentation. My E5 twins or the E5 Bengay, red, black, and green fire symbols. Al Thomas, peace and love to you. Uh-oh, little Al Thomas. So I guess this is father and son in, in, in the building, Bob. That's what it seems like. Asiatic born. Got the fire symbols. <laughs> so this, so people got all, they showing you the love, Bob. And also, family, let's not just support Bob, you know, with our, our mouths, right? Let's make sure we submit, we, we support him with our, our resources. And so I just dropped his cash app on the screen, okay? It's on the screen and it's in the chat, Okay. Beautiful mind, the queen mother, the fire symbols. Baba Gregory. I don't know what Baba Gregory said. Excellent presentation, John Hargrove. Michael Barnes, what's that? <laughs> That's wash hands. Let me see who this is. Bad dude, fire symbols. Real truth and power said, for all those who like the presentation, don't just stop at getting the info. Use it. Black-owned businesses, put your race first. I say. I see 100 black. Raul. I see you, Baba. I see Mama. She put the hand claps in there. Bent in peace and love to you. The infamous African, I see you. Said race first. Man, the Africans in the building tonight, Baba. The warriors are in the building. Oh, here we go. Yep, yep. Al Thomas said, yes, doctor. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Father and son team is in the building. I love it. I love it. I love it. Who is this? Sister Janisa, the red, black, and green. Baba Gregory said, B1 Sovereignty, Michael Barnes, Blacktastic. So we appreciate you. Baba Adisa's right there. Peace and love to you, Baba Adisa. Fatty you. He put the fire signs in there. Jabral, I see you. So, so we're going to open this up, family, for Q&A, Q&A. And like I said, right now, let's send a donation to Baba. This is my aunt. This is reciprocity. Let's reciprocate, right? He gave us a lot tonight. And so let's give back, right, what we can, okay? So he gave to us, he poured into us, right? He poured into our minds, he poured into our spirit. Let's pour back into him, family. And one way that we can do that is by sending him some resources, some cash. Also, Baba, talk about your books. Let him know where to find your books at, Baba. Yeah. So I see one, I, 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 um, I failed to mention the Race First Rally 2023. Mm -hmm. So I do want to mention that real quick. So that's the rally this year is in July, July 29th. And it's going to be held in one that's going to be in Baltimore, um, Baltimore, Maryland, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Gulfport, Mississippi, um, and Tampa, Florida on um, August, I mean, July 29th. Eastern time is 2 p.m. Um, Central time is 1 p.m. You know, if you're near any of those places, please come out, please support. 
Um, you can go on Facebook, you can go on Instagram, you can see the flyer, circulate the flyer. Um, let's get as many people at these rallies as possible. Just know that by rally, we're not using the word in the traditional sense of trying to protest anything. We are saying race first rally in the context of let's get organized. So the basis of the rally is to bring us together to demonstrate the different organizations and people that's doing race work so we can begin to know who's who. We can build together and link up and connect so we can get to the year 2025 where we can have this national race first convention where we can begin to lay out a lot of the work that we need to be doing. If we studied our story correctly, we know that in the 1800s, you had a lot of convention movements taking place during that time period. And the conventions were utilized to bring Af African and black people together to push the race work. And we want to just come in the same spirit, you know, um, in like fashion. Ashe, Ashe, Baba, Ashe. And so family, I dropped the link in the chat. Come on in, hop on the panel. Don't be scared of Baba. Nobody hopped on the last time. Don't be scared of Baba. Come on in. Yeah, come on in. Click the link if you come got a question in. for Baba. Yeah, and just come build with us for a few. We got Baba for another 20 minutes, family. Then we got to let him go. He got a whole, yeah, isn't that Baltimore? We always say whole family, whole, he got a whole family. He got a whole family, okay? Yeah, whole family. Um, <laughs> so, well. so family, we only got him for about another 15 to 20 minutes. Baba, did you want to say something? Yes. So, um, I, look, I, 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 I kept the presentation short. Because it's um, there's a lot that goes into that, but I really wanted to draw out um, how the spirit of truth moves from one of us to the next of us. Mm -hmm. And that spirit of truth is when we elevate now consciousness and we begin to develop um, what I like to call ancestral consciousness and mm -hmm. tap into intuitive knowledge. So you have what is known as empirical knowledge, theoretical knowledge, and you have intuitive knowledge. Intuitive knowledge is opened up when we tap into ancestral consciousness. When we are going so deep into ourselves and ascending within ourselves, we are connecting in that collective consciousness. So that's why we see those themes showing up like that and these individuals, because these men were doing that type of work with themselves. They were going inward and ascending inside of themselves into consciousness because our task as human beings is to become fully human that's why we come to the world so we come to the world to be fully human see to be human is to be in a state of becoming human come let me on. say that again mm -hmm. to be human is to be in a state of becoming human and that becoming process is a perpetual process of internal development expansion and ascension it's happening inside of us. And when you are moving that way, you're able to plug into this vast reservoir of consciousness and access it for your own usage. And so that's the reason why we, we can see that line that particular way. A hundred years from the day, another person will come along and do a similar presentation and show a longer line. Like I could have I could have continued to go at the guard, you know, and kept on going down, right? It's not going to stop. It doesn't stop there. And we need to know that it doesn't stop. You know, the per see, the, the business of anybody that's great at what they do is to do it so great that another person can come along and stand on what you've done and push it further. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you can't do it to the degree that someone can come along and see what you've done and learn from what you've done and stand on it and push it forward, then you didn't do a good job at it. I say. Ashe, peace and love, Suntan. Peace and love to your brother. You have the floor. You have the floor, brother. Go ahead and speak your speech, whatever peace. you want to ask Baba. Mm -hmm. Peace, Sister Maya and Brother Baba. Uh, I have a, a question for you. And uh, yeah, I, I like you to chime in too, Sister Maya, because this is not off topic, but it's about our people. Okay, here's the thing. Um, and I won't play devil advocate with both of you guys. Would you agree that black people as a whole, we are great and we taught half the world as far as with the world, with math, with math, with, uh, with everything. And I'm trying, I'm going to try to walk with you. I walk with me to my point. Uh, we strong physically. We are all of this. Would you, would you both agree? 
that black people are all of what I just um, put out there. Would you agree with that, uh, Baba? Um, would I agree that we are great people? We are great, we're smart, we're strong, we're more and we're innovating. We we are all of the above. Yes, we are. So here's my now. Here's the question. Here's the devil. And Dr. Mayad, I need you to chime in. How did we end up at the bottom of the totem pole? And how, with through all our intelligence and greatness, were we enslaved and treated like dogs throughout my life? That all I can remember. And then I ask this question because. I'm not really um, re a religious person, but I do uh, have a spiritual, you know, connection with the ancestors. However, I moved away from Christianity and things of that nature, and I got over to um, Kemet because, you know, I believe in order, right? And Kemet was here, like, you know, people was doing things out of Kemet and Kushberg. And I don't want to get off subject, but my thing is how through this greatness, Baba, did <laughs> We end up at the bottom of the totem pole, Doctor Maya, and that's for yeah, you. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely, absolutely. I'm listening to you, brother. So, you know, and it's not a hard question because we get we've been treated like dogs, and I ponder this day in and day out because I'm still studying and things of that nature. And the great things you said, I listened to you the, the other day, and I really related to you. However, we at the bottom of the totem pole, and what did we do? Because I'm not going with this Bible narrative that we was cursed with all this ham and sham stuff. See, I'm not, I'm, I'm not buying that, right? But uh, this through my thinking now, so I'm, a, I want y'all to walk with me. I just believe we were so spiritual and we were so good and great that we didn't form no military and we didn't try to go out conquering. We didn't do none of these things which the, uh, our adversaries did, you know, the Europeans, even our, some of our own people. So I'll give you the floor. But what do you think about that question? That, or am I real off track? No, no you're, you're not, not off track. No, not at no, all. Go no, ahead, you're not off track. And that's a question that so many people ask. Um, it's, it's really a question that requires really a, a complex answer. But because you came on and asked the question, I'm going to give you an answer, and to give the answer, it's not, it's, it can't, it's not gonna be a quick answer. So I'm, I'm ready to walk with you. So walk with me. So not be a quick answer. The first thing I want to do is I want to I want to dismiss the belief that we were conquered because we were spiritual. Okay. Because spir spirituality. That's all thinking. See, spirituality doesn't make us weak. No. Okay. See, that, it does. Spirituality has nothing to do with weakness. Okay. Um. So. The next thing I would say is this. We ended up in the mess we ended up in after almost a 3,000 year war. A so war? Our, yes. So we so, so when, when we look into our story, we we'll see that the white Asians began to invade, invade Africa almost 4,000 years ago. This is when they began to invade. So when, so when we get to the 14th and the 15th century AD, we've been fighting for about 2,000 years at that point. Mm. Like, we, 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 not, we didn't just fight white Europeans. We fought the barbaric Arabians also. Come on, teach, Baba, teach. See, and teach. oftentimes, that's left out the narrative, right? Teach, Baba. We the, those barbaric, because Islam, what Prophet Muhammad did, with, with those um, Arabians who were nothing but a bunch of warring tribes, in the Arabian Peninsula. So Islam, when he brought Islam, and he wasn't a black man, like they want to try to say. He was from that region. Um, but when he brought that to his people, he brought something to them to organize and to civilize them people. However, they were still warlike. You know, so they came in the year six, well, around 637 AD. They came with their invasion. But before them, you know, the Romans had came. Before the Romans, the Greeks had came. Before the Greeks, you had the Assyrians, the Persians, the you had all these different groups who perpetually and consistently invaded Africa. And we put up a fight through all of that. You know, we even had Tutmosis III who pushed the boundaries of Kemet. You know what I'm saying? He pushed the boundaries of Kemet in the effort to keep the invaders out. The invaders, the invaders continuously still came in. They still invaded. 
You know, you had Ramses II who fought the Hittites. Um, so we can go on into all the wars that we fought against them people. You can't find another people on earth who've been fighting and defending themselves for such for as long as we have. So at some point, we're gonna get run down. Right. At some point, we're gonna get run down. See, oftentimes we look at the fact that these Europeans treat us so they treat us so much like dirt, and we just automatically say, Well, how we get here if we were so great? But we fought for over 2,000 years. It ain't they didn't just this didn't happen overnight. And I'm not even talking about our experience in the USA. I'm not even talking about the quote unquote with what the Portuguese and the Spaniards done on the western the western coast of Africa. We got to talk about what the Arabs done in North Africa, all through Central Africa, and places like that. They was ravaging that land, sending our people all through the Mediterranean. You know what I'm saying? They was ravaging. They was running all down through the eastern coast of Africa, snatching our people up, taking their testicles, taking their penises, destroying us, wow. sending us sending us across the Red Sea, sending us into India. That's never talked about, right? We have been the perpetual victim of the world. Mm. Can mm. I say something? Mm. I like to say this. Uh, that and you and you correct me too if I'm wrong. So through that, what what you just said, that's when the um, how you want to call it, Doctor Matt, when they when they um, socialized us and made color a, um, a status. You follow where I'm going with this? The darker you are, since and I and I and, I, and I'm gonna be real with you guys as possible. See, a, a guy like me and you, Baba, or darker, we are treated. Even Sister Mayat, her mm -hmm. tone it's a little lighter than ours. But the darker you get, the worse it that you are treated in this America. See, I'm in, I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, and it's all kind of black jokes. Your black table, your black all this stuff that was uh, perpetuated by our own people against each other because the world turned against a very, very dark color. So, you know, I'm a deep thinker as well. So I said through this socialization and through this status, they made white here and made black there. I'm talking they about did. not in the color that I say white. I'm saying in the color of white people because a dark person Baba, me, you, and Sister Maya, we can go to a restaurant. And I live in Michigan, Detroit, Michigan. We can go to a place, it's a very prestigious place called Bluefield Hills in Detroit. Now, we go there, all them whiteys going to look at us. You know, like, what they doing in here? I, that's the thing that bothers me to this day. So, they attacked darkness. Um, but you can, you're going to be discriminated against, no, cap, no matter what complexion, as long as you black. But I'm just so that's, I'm just saying, um, brother, sister, I just wondered this blackness that we have was so threatening that they made it mud and they made us to the ground. I'm talking about this complexion. Have y'all ever thought about it like that? No. So this is what I would say. I understand your question and I understand your reasoning because that's the way um, th that's the way the narrative has went up until this point. But my role um, as I've been commissioned by the ancestors, is to bring a unique and a better perspective to it. So we had That's never we had never discriminated against because we are black. We had never discriminated against because we are black. The discrimination is because of the distortion of the mindset of white folk. It has nothing to do with blackness. That's their issue. That's mm. not us. But and, but if, if we don't understand that it's not us, then we're going to consistently turn our analysis back onto us and we'll start analyzing us, right? Asking those type of questions that particular way. The analysis is on them because nothing is problematic about what it is to be black, right? Because black is the basis, is the essence of all things. Nothing could exist without black. So we got to reevaluate the whole thinking around black and our emphasis can't even be on the fact of, of because they had these systems set up. Right, we know that these systems set up. Our thinking has to be around the solution, right? Because we can get overwhelmed trying to fit, look at all what they're doing, and that's a part of how they work. To keep us looking at everything and distractions here, distractions there, so we can't get together. We got to get together and organize around how we're going to move forward, 
right? We understand once we look into our story and we are paying attention, we know what they have done. And we know how they have done it and what they've been doing. And we know what they're planning to do. We understand mm -hmm. all of that. So mm -hmm. at this point, all we got to do is say, you know what? I like how Bob is thinking. We share the same ideas, the same principles. I'm going to connect with that Bob. We got to just start connecting. Just start connecting and building and just doing the work. That's it. Because we can talk forever about, you know what I'm saying, what they're doing. Because they're never going to stop doing what they're doing. It's who Ooh. they are. It's who yeah. they are. They're not going to stop that. They're not, they're not going to stop that, right? And, and, they, they, and they can care less about us having conversations about their treatment of us. Right? right, because if they didn't behave the way they behave to us, they would die. Like they exist behaving as they behave, and we gotta understand that. Like it's it's just who they are. Mm. I, I hope I didn't take you off. I hope I didn't take y'all off um, topic. Oh no, I appreciate. No, 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 brother Suntan. We appreciate you, brother, and thank you so much, Baba, for your. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, just for your questions. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, I just Absolutely. want to say this before I, um, before you let somebody else in because I'm not trying to hold the flow. When I heard you the other day, I was like, dang, that's why I subscribe to your channel, Dr. Maya, because I didn't even know you had the channel. I, I, I heard Bubba and then I, I said, let me go on and subscribe and like this thing here. And he kind of made me, you know, I, you know, I get up four in the morning, five to go to work every day. But he made me have, I had a pleasant thought you know that that night I heard you the other day and I because I remember I put strong words remember that Dr. Ma if you yes, can I remember, I remember I remember what you were in the chat I remember it I made it. me think you know so keep doing what you're doing because you're making brothers think I'm 63 and you making me think because I understand that we it got to be a collective thing that's what you're trying to push is we got to be do it collectively however we got, and, and Dr. Martin, and you the witness because you've been, I, I, I'm on Sarnetta's channel all the time. We got so many, we got the Hebrews, the more, we got so many people want to do that instead of want to do what Bob is talking about. That's right. You That's understand? Right. Do you follow me? And I, I'm not I, knocking nobody now. Don't no, 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 no. Because I, I learned from everybody. But, hey, Bob, we got a community over here that want to, Debate and art and debate and go back and forth about what they call shalom, uh, 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 the Moors, the oh man, and they want to go back and forth and they want to tell you you pseudo and all of this kind of stuff. Man, we need to get together and do something like Baba talking about, Dr. Ma. That's what we need to do. Come on. So, what I'm going to do is just keep listening and, um, you know, keep donating. You know what I'm saying? And things like that. I'm gonna start yeah. donating to you. You know, I know money is essential. You understand? Absolutely. But I'm doing it because I appreciate okay. the word. And we appreciate we appreciate you. That's we appreciate you. Appreciate yeah. your subscription. Appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate your question and your engagement with us. And so I'm gonna go ahead and land your plane and, and yes, go ahead and pass the mic to who we got next. Black. Mogus, go ahead and unmute your mic, family. You have the floor. Go ahead and unmute your mic, family. You have the floor. I'll be before Hodie. Hey, Baba, how you doing? Hey, um, I just wanted to bring in something that we've talked about in the uh, in the course um, for your book here, and that's uh, along the terms of brothers who are building where they are. And how they they seem to like there's no uh, fellowship or brotherhood um, to connect with, you know, across the country and things like that. Because, you know, me being in, in Denver, I'm doing what I do here. Um, but there's brothers around, you know, around the country who feel like it's um, there's no support, basically. Yeah. Um, and so just speak on how brothers can fellowship and seek that uh, that support that they need from others, especially when they, you know, uh, put together events and, you know, they may fail and, you know, they let that get them into that, uh, that big stupor, as we talked about in your course, um, and how brothers just need to, you know, really just bounce back from that. No, that's a great question. Um, consider, so cause consider the fact that we live in a time where we're living in and we have access to these tools and these mechanical devices, we have to maximize the use of these things. So, Many of us are in different locations throughout this particular land and, and across the world. What I would suggest that we do 
in our efforts to do any of the work is we connect with sincere brothers. I'm speaking to the brothers now because I think the brothers need to be connected. But ultimately, the brothers and the sisters need to be connected. But we need to be doing work with men first. So I think the brothers could easily do that if they connect with other brothers that's already doing the work. Reach out to someone that you know that's sincere and is genuine. Because if you're doing the work and you're sincere, there's going to be a track record. And not only will it be a track record, it's going to be evidence that what you're doing is effective. And that's all you need to look for. Is, is it effective? Is that person consistent in terms of its character? Because you notice in the presentation, these men was talking about good character. So we have to think, keep good character out front. So we, we, want, we want to connect with brothers that has good character, that's doing the work, and just have a track record, and we link up. And that linking up can be a, a weekly Zoom. You know, we got a, a weekly Zoom gathering where we come in together primarily to administer to one another because we can feel a little overwhelmed or a little um, abandoned at times because things may not go the way we wanted to go trying to do this work and we need a little bit more reinforcements. We need some reinvigoration. So that, that Zoom gathering is about men administering to men to build men up and to connect. And then out of that gathering, you know, men can begin to organize things together and do things together, right? But part of being nationalistic we got to keep this in mind. Part of being nationalistic, which from my perspective, I understand it, nationalism naturally builds into Pan-Africanism. We can't say we are nationalistic, Pan-Africanist, or sovereignists in our thinking and never leave our city. You have to find a way to leave that city, you know, to link up with other people. Our brothers and sisters in the 1800s who had no walkie-talkie, they had no telephone. They had no internet. But they was putting together gatherings of 2,000 and 3,000 people from all over the land mm. because they were serious about the business of doing the work. Like, we can't do race work when it's convenient and comfortable. Mm. You can't only do it when it's convenient and comfortable. Race work has to be prioritized. So... As I conclude, you know, answering your question, my brother, I would just say, man, you know, brothers need to link up, connect, build, start something online, work from there, organize something, and then periodically arrange to get together physically. If that got to be by, you know, twice a year, if y'all from different places, then that's what y'all do. Y'all get together twice a year. But we got to start doing that type of work so we can build and reinforce one another. <laughs> Last part, if I could, just real quick, Baba, just uh, close oh, yeah, with yeah, this yeah. question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just good, close with this question here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Maad. Um, because we, uh, you know, this this uh, maleness, as we spoke about this past Tuesday, um, we know that that leads to a type of pig-headedness that our brothers have. So when it comes to a brother wanting to organize, um, how must we get, you know, certain brothers to understand, or all of our brothers really, to understand that you have a place in this, but it might not be at the leadership. You have to be able to learn to humble yourself to let another man take charge. Mm. And with that, I say peace. Yeah. So, I, me personally, what I do, my, my methodology is that I really seek to build with people who um, are willing to work together you know if i i'm not going to convince you that we need to be organizing together i, I don't have the energy to debate a person mm -hmm. i don't have the energy to, to do any of that because all of that is, is futile so i think that we need to seek out individuals who are genuine and if we are genuine in ourselves your own sense of genuineness will lead you to others who are genuine so if we start doing Self-work first. We will always be guarded and directed to others that's going to complement what we already doing with ourselves. Absolutely. Black Bogus, did you have any additional questions, brother, before I before I pass the mic? That was it. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. And beautiful questions, beautiful questions and beautiful points. And, and Baba, that was a beautiful, powerful, powerful responses. I see a queen mother, queen mother, BJ is in the building. Queen, you go ahead and unmute your mic. I love when the sisters join. I love when the sisters come. I, I've been outnumbered queen. So I love when the queen mothers come in and join the panel. Peace and love to you, queen mother. Oh, thank you so much. I'll try. I try to help you out because, but I already know you got it all taken care of. Um, you know, I, I constantly look at the past to see what's going on in, in our present to see what is going to then occur in the future. And I just feel like we have become so comfortable in our oppression mm. that we're not trying to fight to change it. So it's easier for me to point at each other and say, you're the problem than to address why haven't we progressed? We have been digressing lower and lower for the last 40 plus years and then isolating each other into these different categories that amount to absolutely nothing with no power, with no substance, with no community and come up with all asinine excuses for, well, this is why I have to do it because, and it doesn't benefit us. Is that we were gonna, you know, you got so many categories of I'm a more, I'm a national, I'm a F. What does any of these acronyms mean if we're all sitting in the same bucket mm. and they keep throwing the water on top of us? Mm. We have to find what really matters for us to unify, just like every other group has gotten it so clear. This is why I hate you. But I got to like you, because if I don't like you, I won't be here. So as long as you stay on that side of this mile, and you stay on that other side of the mile, we can live okay. But we don't, we don't, we don't find, we, we have not found that, that, the essence to say, you know, it's okay that we have different ideology, but what's important is that in this world, everybody's looking at us like this. And how do we get beyond that? Mm hmm mm hmm you know, to me, it's important to go maybe beyond 2025. Maybe maybe we need to start 3,000 years ago where we were standing at because we keep getting stuck on this ship that's forever sinking. Mm. My life did not start when my ancestors came over here. And I don't know if other people would like that. I can feel their essence everywhere I go. Mm. And I've gone other places that people don't even look like me and I felt that essence. So that means my life is beyond what is here and what's being told to me and, and being defined as what I, I'm supposed to be. Because with us, we become what they tell us we are. And is that truly who you are? And we have to start defining ourselves for ourselves because our children will not see who they are because they can only see who they are within, uh, within us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we look at why are the kids acting this way? Because this, is a, this has been a deep programming and a deep conditioning for many decades. And we keep seeing the same gameplay go over and over and over again. And we're screaming, why is all our youth in jail? This is, doesn't make any sense. Because they have been conditioned from the from the cradle, pretty much the grade and the and statistics and the data, which is making it even more scary because there's so much data on all of us. It's defining, we know when they're gonna get out. We know when she's gonna do this. We All we have to do is put these little carrots in front of her. She'll start acting this way. We will bring these certain elements in into her environment and she'll go, she will no longer be a threat. And then the boys, oh yeah, we'll, we'll show him this. We'll display the guns before him. We'll get him you know, to start being around certain people. And therefore we're gonna Pipe him right at this age and this point, we already got him locked in, and his mindset doesn't change beyond what he has been programmed to be. Mm. And we all have to get deprogrammed from this nightmare that we're living in. 
and stop pointing the pe- fingers at each other. We're not the problem. We're because we're not in control of the system. I was look, Queen Mother. I was waiting for you to give me a hint, like I'm getting ready to land my plane. But that was just woo. Thank you so much, Queen Mother, for coming in and, and dropping oh, that heat. You. So you didn't thank really have a question; you just had a comment. You wanted to come in, and but but when you think about it, Queen Mother, that's what he's talking about with race first, organizing yeah. around race. So yeah. setting your setting your ideologies aside, your um. Your, your your relationships with your your fraternities because you got people who identify based on their you know their uh, a t- a ter- I'm sorry fraternity and sorority affiliations right based on yep. their religion based on like you said their ideology based on sexual preferences people will yep. identify first with those things rather than race so that's what he's saying throw all that stuff aside cast yes. aside all of that stuff right I feel like I'm in church when they say cast aside, but cast aside all of that stuff. And now let's unify and let's get organized around race. So who cares if you are more, you know, not, not, and I'm not being smart when I say, who no, cares. I'm no, just, no, of course I'm just not. saying it. being a more, being a Hebrew Israelite, being this, being that, your ideology, your religion, whatever, 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 cast that stuff aside. And now let's unify and let's organize Let's organize, strategize, and mobilize under, you know, race first. And so yeah. that's, that's what he's saying. So thank you so much, Absolutely. Queen Mother, for coming through with this with the affirmation. It was very, very powerful, Queen Mother. Thank you, have, you, you so have, much. Do you, you have closing words, Queen Mother, or do you want me to go ahead and pass the mic? Well, just that, you know, it's, it's nothing wrong with whatever you identify with, because each of us is different. Right. But if we keep dividing, our, you, you know, you're... <laughs> Your physicists keep dividing into a number, it bec- eventually becomes zero. That come on, come on, come on. So, 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 are we trying to make sure that all of us are zeros? Come on, because if we keep picking apart, picking apart, picking apart, and not building on my Hebrew, my more, my a foundational Black American, you got a business, I got a dollar to give you. Because we have no problem giving dollars to everybody else. Come on. Come on. Facts. And then and then I hear some that sit and say, well, you know, uh, uh, giving to the black community don't, doesn't mean anything. Well, if it, that's the case, then why every other community want our dollars? Mm-hmm. We have to stop making our oppressor's dream, which is a nightmare to us, our dreams. I say. And you guys take care. Thank you for having me. And I'm loving what you're saying, Baba. We just, you know, it starts small. It starts with a drop, but enough drops will fill will fill the ocean. And we just have to keep pushing towards it. I say, Queen Mother. Thank you so much, Queen Mother. Thank you. Take care. You take care, Queen Mother. Brother Jehudi, you keep cutting the camera on and off. Dakari. Brother Dakari. Jehudi. I'm about to put him off, man. Jehudi, you got the floor, brother. You on. You keep cutting off the camera. You're not saying anything. Can you hear me, brother? I can't hear you, brother. Your mic isn't working, brother. Your mic isn't working, brother. Brother Jehudi, your mic isn't working, brother. All right, come back in. 100 Black, I'm going to put you on. But I know how long-winded you are. We got two more people in the queue. All right? I know how Baba get down. Baba be on his joint. We'll be on here, brother. Baba, he won't tell till 9 o'clock. But Baba, go ahead. You got the mic, Baba. I'm, mess- I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you, Baba. Baba, you got to unmute your mic, Baba. Hold on. Let me... Huh? Yeah, there you go. You're good to go now. You're good to go. All right. All right. Now, I ain't going to be on here all night. But anyway, check this out. Um, I listened to a couple of points. And... Uh, like Brother Bobby here, like he was talking, well, Brother was talking right there, like I say, you know, I, I, I'd like to build on what he's saying, but the Brother over here, I kept this in mind. One thing we need to realize when it comes, okay, this is kind of off conversation, but it also builds a, um, a certain independence for us. Now, once again, like I say, I live in a white neighborhood, okay, right now. I'd like to get back to where everybody's at. Now, 
we have to realize something. Over the last, let's just say 60 some odd years, we know that Brother King fought for us to, to be able to go to these public places and stuff like that and different things and looked upon as just as human as anybody else so we can go to the restaurants, go to Woolworth and all that. Okay, some of these places are just fine, but some of the things, like I said, we got more than what we really needed, per se. Now, think about this. Now, you mentioned the restaurant, okay, and I can dig it. There's some restaurants you want to try out now and then. But in this climate, let's begin back to, say, just about 19, uh, when was that, 19, uh, late 90s, okay, when these crackers started doing stuff to people's food again, see what I'm saying? Now, before that time, we don't know what they were doing. We were just happy to mingle with everybody, which is totally human. We don't know what they doing. We don't know how much filth we have consumed, how much stuff our foreparents have consumed between that time and now being happy that we can do what they do. So I'm saying to bring that up to date, we got to realize something. We shouldn't even desire to do a lot of the things that they want to do in their places. We should be making our own bread. We should basically have some type of a garden on our on our on our porches. Now we can't live off of everything that what I'm saying it builds a certain type of independence. It gives you something spiritually to deal with and look for. Myself, like I say, I'll go to Panda restaurant periodically because I can see what they're doing. Okay, but I don't desire to go to places like Chili's and anywhere like that because number one, these people how you don't know these people. People can do anything they want to to the food. Now what the lady was just got to talking about here. I'll sum that up to one thing that I've been talking about for so long. And really, for some reason, whenever you're talking to people, they got their own channels and whatever, they don't seem to understand, they don't get, they don't comprehend centralization. You talk about Kemet, okay? You talk about um, different spiritualities. You talk about the pyramid. There's a top to that pyramid right there. That's centralization that brings the power down in order to make that pyramid what it's supposed to be. You see what I'm saying? So with all these different groups and different organizations, black organizations filling the power you know, all around the United States and stuff like that, don't nobody like each other, per se, okay? Unless you're having a meeting and we get emotional and we do a little of this, do a little of that. But no, don't, don't mess up my thing and don't mess up her thing. See, when people get to the point that we can centralize our efforts, centralize, okay? And see, there's a lot that just cannot be discussed on this social media. There's a lot of stuff they don't need, people don't need to know because algorithms pick it up. Algorithms is a snitch, okay? But there's so much we can talk about. And then there's another thing I, was, I noticed last time. You had some um, a brother on here. He was powerful, but we can't come on here because I love to do it. I love to do it. We can't come over here using profanity because we want to keep this to where every child, every teenager can come in here and hear this. You see what I'm saying? And know where we're coming from. See, like, nobody in here is really doing that, but one brother came on. I was like, He's going, I'm like, I started cussing, but I didn't come on here. I'm like, this, you know what I'm saying? But we need to keep it to where all the youngsters can hear what we're saying. You understand where I'm coming from? Because we're, we're talking, we're, we're speaking on vital points. We're speaking on vital information. But once again, like I said, we don't need a certain thing that we can do, but we can build our pride off of not having to go to their restaurant, not having to go and eat their ice cream. A lot of stuff we were doing before they did it, before they allowed us to do it. but Dr. King was doing one thing. We're on another level now. We can break away from that. We can have our own garden on the on the on the U on the uh, patio porch in the backyard. Um, we can we can do our own thing. You see, what I'm saying we can do this for our own benefit towards spirituality. Because spirituality, like I say, is one of the things we're talking about. That too, spirituality is one of the things. Okay, that's one of the essence of the universe that keep us going, that kept us going. And see, the devil gets upset that we don't die, but it's not intended for us to die. Number one, the powers that, I came up with a different terminology for them, but these manipulative powers, I put it that way, that are out there, all they have, this is what they are, they are a disease, they are a virus. They are the virus that are conducive to virus. They convey viruses, whether it's hate, whether it's in a needle, whatever the case may be, they convey this. They can help it, but they are instrumentalized behind wanting to get something in their mouth and have the riches and what have you, making them seem powerful. But that's a weakness. So with that being said, like I say, we don't have to do a lot of things that they do. 
We can just get about that. You can pass by a restaurant and just have your your um independent mind just say, you know, I don't need that. I can go. Ma you look at something on Chili. You see something on Chili's. The advertising the food. You can go home and make that. You can save yourself some money. You see. So I just want to put that down there. Like I always say, you know, I can write it better than I speak it. But um, hey, you know, that's it right there. I just wanted to say that because I'm doing something right here too. So hey, no power to y'all. Love y'all. All right, love you too, Baba. We appreciate yeah. you coming on, Baba. Yeah. Appreciate mm -hmm. your appreciate your input. Appreciate your input. Yeah. I see Brother Jordan Bell. You have the floor, brother. You go ahead and unmute your mic. Peace, everyone on the panel. Uh, peace, peace, peace to Doctor. Peace to Doctor Mayat. Thank you for your service. Um, you do a tremendous and important work. I follow your channel very much and appreciate all the work that you are doing. Um, peace to Baba. Thank you for coming on. And I just have a real quick question. I'm an avid reader. I'm an avid learner and historian. And I wanted to ask, is there any one or two books, Dr. Mayad and Baba, that you may uh, recommend um, for me to learn and teach about race first, African, Black? Is there one or two books that I can go to that will teach me about who I am so that I can teach my daughter who she is? Mm, that's beautiful. As soon as he said race first, Bob, I thought about Tony Martin. Then I thought about Dr. Amos Wilson, Blueprint for Black Power. I always say those are my two Bibles. So Blueprint for Black Power, I love that. But when you say teaching you about race first, specifically in my mind, that's the first book that came to mind, Tony Martin. Like just to start him off, Bob, what do you think about that? At least Tony Martin, race first, if he wants to start with that. Uh, if I understand this question correctly, so the, the unique thing about Tony Martin's book, Tony Martin's book is really an analysis of Marcus Garvey's movement. Well, that's true. Right. So the book, so 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 um that's the thing about like there is no book you can go and read about somebody actually breaking down race first. Even Garvey didn't do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Garvey talked, he 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 used made the assertions. So the whole race first thinking is what's being developed now. Mm -hmm. you know so that's kind of why I did the presentation. A lot of work that I've been doing over the last couple of years is kind of expanding on um, the definition of race first, what it is and stuff like that, because to actually get it, a person would have to study all those individuals right. and, and, and many more, you know what I'm saying, to kind of compile it together, if that makes any sense. There's no book that you can go to and pick it up and it's going to get in there, but this is the race first philosophy. No, you're right, 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 Bob. You know, but, so, so you're but, not going to... You're not confined it that way. But do you think that would be a great start for him? Tony Martin would be a great start for him. You don't think so at all? No? All right. I don't think it would because I think, like he said, he's trying to get like at the beginning stages and he's just breaking down Garvey movement. Right, 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 right. So, so he's like, not... he's analyzing the UNIA. He, he's getting yeah. that. So let me ask this question. How much history have you already read? Mm, that's a good question, Baba. Um, I've read Dr. Chancellor Williams' Destruction of Black, Black Civilization. Um, I've read a few of, you know, Dr. Ben's works, Dr. Clark. I'm more so versed in Black American history. Okay. Um, so Black American history, a lot of the, I do a lot of work in the city that I live in on the, we had, we had a Black Wall Street here in Roanoke, Virginia, which is Southwest Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a bl Black Wall Street here. So I do a lot of work with that type of history um and I, i'm just my, my daughter's 13 she's getting ready to go into high school and i just want to make sure that i'm doing my part to really put into her who she is as a young black woman um and and i'm trying to find though that information those books those lectures dr mayotte's channel has been a huge help with that um you know all of the work that she does with mail trek that has been a huge help um, so I'm, I'm just trying to get pointed in the, in the right direction. So, um, what I, what I would, what I would like to do, if you, um, if you can send me an inbox on Facebook and what I'll do is I can put together a nice little, small, little b basic list, okay. um, that you can kind of move through, you know, that could help you just to, to develop the consciousness. You know, but off the top, you know, you most definitely want to read like Dr. Mott was saying. You want to read like Amos Wilson, you want John the Clark. It's a slew of individuals you want to read. Yes. But some, some of their materials is actually complex material in terms of their concepts. Yeah, that is and true. And as an educator, 
I'm not going to try to teach a person algebra if they don't know multiplication because you're going to try to, you want to scalp it. So the way I help to build consciousness, that's what I do. I like to scalp for people rather than just giving them the most popular books because some of those concepts uh, requires additional material to grasp those concepts they're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I would, you know, suggest if that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know he would love that, Bob. And I, I mean, when I started my journey, I mean, I, my, my journey started with like Anthony T. Browder, you yeah. know, from the Browder file. That was like when I was 16, you know, and then it went from there to Dr. Naeem Akbar's work, Breaking the Chains of Psychological Slavery, Community Yourself, Know Thyself. Then it went from there to Autobiography of Malcolm X, and it went to the Life and Lessons of Marcus Garvey. So that was my journey. But I do hear what you're saying, Bob, but you don't, you know, it. What I, you can, what I think would be good? Okay. Off top, Afrocentricity and center. Oh yeah, those okay. two books will be good. Afrocentricity, um, uh, um, Dr. Malefe Asante and center by Nwale Mubarudi. All right, those two books. Dr. Mayad has had him on the channel before with um, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Bahudi, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. We get those two books and study okay. those and study those two books. I would suggest you read. Apple centricity first. Yeah. But he study what, what he's saying in that book and allow it to really, you know, marinate in your consciousness. And then we center. Um, and make sure you really understand both of them thoroughly, because that those two books together are going to give you a solid foundation in how we should be perceiving mm. phenomena and information. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank Thank you all again for 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 this for this evening and, and answering my question. And I will send you a Facebook uh, message, Baba. And again, thank you, Doctor Maya, for your no problem, your warrior. Service. No problem, warrior. I appreciate you coming on. Appreciate your words. Appreciate your inquiry. And thank you for coming on. You know what, Baba? We need to do, and I need to have one too, like a straight up book list. So when people say, "What should I read?" Just have a book list that boom. You get what I'm saying, Bob? Or just a book, like book suggestions that I can send. So that that was a really good question. I appreciate that, young warrior, uh, for coming on and um, and asking that question. I see Jahudi. Jahudi, you got it together now. Did you get it together, brother? Can you hear me? Yep, I hear you loud and clear, right, warrior. Right, Peace and love to you. How are you? You're going to be I'm our last good. question. Uh -huh. All right, thank you, thank you. I appreciate y'all bringing me back in. Y'all been doing a good job. I tuned in. I think that was Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday and today. So, um... Y'all been doing good. Uh, my question is for Bob and Imhotep. I want to know, so how do you see the Race First movement expanding on the continent of Africa? And also, how do you see it also helping us to gain control of the continent? Uh, I know you spoke about the convention coming up in 2025, but, you know, like once we really catch fire on the African continent, like how do you see the process moving along? So in terms of the continent, so there's there are many groups, good groups at that, that are already doing a lot of race work in terms of um, building for the unification of Africa. And it's a matter of, excuse me, it's a matter of actually connecting up with those groups. A few of those groups, you know, they have reached out to me. We just haven't been able to really sit down and, and vibe together. So I, I'm so, so basically to your question, um, Race first is what they see and understand. And at this point, it's just a matter of connecting and, and, and from connecting, leveraging resources on both sides. But I think that a great, a great amount of the work is going to come from the diaspora side. And I think it's going to come from our side because we have been contending with um, this enemy in a very intimate way for a very long time. And because of that, you know, we have developed some unique skills and talents that are very useful in the struggle for the unification and sovereignty of Africa. So Race First in, in, in um, the National Race First Convention and Race First on the Continent is a matter of replicating the Race First rallies and organizing around Race First in Africa which we began on in some levels. It's just a matter of just keep on picking up the speed.
Did you um look are you frozen? I think he was. He's on you unfrozen now, brother. All right. Um yeah, the last thing I heard you say, my bad. Somebody sent me a message, and I guess it messed up the uh that's, a, that's okay. Go ahead. Um yeah, so the last thing I heard you say was um you were saying about replicating basically the rallies here over there and then um you know basically kind of following the same process but like just doing it over there and that's kind of like the last thing i heard you say yes so basically that's what i was saying because at the end of the day it's, it's creating the movement and connecting with those forces by forces i mean the organizations that are already on the ground is doing the work because you have a lot of groups that are doing race work in the area of pushing for african sovereignty and the unification of africa just connecting up with that and bringing whatever energy that we already have into what they have and creating the collaboration and the continue going forward. I'll say. i say, Baba. i say. All right, fellas. So peace and love to you. Baba sent Suntan and, and Brother Jehudi. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to let Baba give us the closing words. Baba, do you have any closing words? For the listening audience, appreciate you, brother Jehudi. Appreciate you. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, can I say something? Did you get that what I sent you? Because I want to make sure that it always can come. Got you. Got you. I, I sent it to Bob. Uh, did you, Bob? Did you get it? Did you get anything? He'll check it. He's checking right now. Yeah, you know, make sure we on point. What's, what's the name? Suntan. Uh, Russell Johnson. Yes. Suntan Supreme at gmail.com. Yes, it came. It came to thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, my, and, I, and I want to thank everybody while I'm online. All of all of you who sent some, you know, a contribution. I received it, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I I'm gonna you. need yours too. Okay, yeah. I'll put it. Um, here it is, right here. Let me do. So let me address this. Um, Okay, hold, hold on one second, Baba, because I'm going to get him. All right, all right, Baba Suntan. There it is. It's Dr. Bailey O2. That's my cash app right there. And I just threw it in the, the chat as well. Okay, yeah, because I'm in stream, yeah. So it's in the chat, so it'll be there for me. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I'll, so, throw it, I'll throw it in the chat for you, Baba. Um, so somebody said something about the um, Afrocentricity of the book. Oh, I didn't know anyone said anything, but go ahead, Baba. So, yeah. So, what if, um, you got ripped off? You, do you see it? Who got That's ripped the, off? What happened? In the um the comments, the person is called, you got ripped off. Who? Oh, that's the person's name? Yes. And okay, they made so let me. Okay, so here we go. Let's see it. Yeah. I see it. It says, okay, because I was like, you got ripped yeah. off. Who did that, Baba? Where was your... so it says, with all due respect, Baba, I had to push back on the Afrocentrism book because Ashante aligns the concept with the LBGTQ agenda when Dr. Clark told us what African centeredness is and Baba Baruti does. So let me answer that question. Um, my book. So I'm not, a, I'm not telling anyone to adopt um, Dr. Ashante's character. Um, but what I do know is that that particular book um, is a very useful book. And regardless of where he's at now, nowhere in that book does he align it with, with the gay movement. And that's what I was just thinking just you know now, Bob. I was like, I don't think he does. Yeah. I don't nowhere, remember that. Like, yeah. so nowhere in the book does he do that. I don't care. I don't care about where he's at now and his thinking now. Because people grow up and they go all kinds of places. But one thing we have to be able to do as a as a people is to be is to be um very I, I don't want to use the word critical. But we have to be very synthetical in terms of how we think and pull knowledge and information together. Afrocentricity is a highly useful book in terms of helping people to better understand phenomena and looking at phenomena from our perspective. It's a very useful tool in that regard. In terms of where Dr. Asante is at now and his thinking, he can have all of that. That's not my advocacy. I'm in terms of me being an educator, and building people, that book lays a great foundation that, sent the, that the Senate book can build upon. That's all I'm suggesting. Um, I'm clear about some of the some of his um, positions now. I'm not pushing that. You know, right. I'm just saying that as, as a as a tool, Afrocentricity, you know, is great. 
Um, we can't say that it's not great because the, the book has served so many Come on, of our baby. Afrocentric thinkers, so many of the scholars that we utilize today, you know what I'm saying, subscribe to an Afrocentric thought. And it came out of that line of thinking. Absolutely. So that's all I'm saying. It's very, it's very important for us to be um, clear about those types of things. You know, I read the book a thousand times. In no way in the book does he push the great the gay agenda. Not you know at what I'm all. saying? Um, now, where he's at today, that's something totally different. Right, right, right. Right, right. And, and, and Baba, we got to get out of that too. Because I've heard, you know, and I'm not going to turn, I know I know we've been on for over two hours, but it, it was, you know, I'm, I'm just, I think I've shared this with you and I talked to Baba, I mean about it. I'm just, you know, people, I don't, this person is doing this and this person is doing that. And I'm like, did you read the work? Because in the work, the person, like you said, where they are now and whatever their ideology is now, that's not what they're pushing in their work. And I noticed that Baba will throw like books away. We'll throw people away and throw the books away and, and oh, I'm not going to listen to this because this is what I heard. And then, like I said, well, did you read the work? Oh, well, I didn't read the work, sister. It, nowhere near in the in the work is, are these things being, you know, pushed, discussed and pushed. So anyway, Baba, do you have any closing words for the listening audience? Yes. Um, for, the, for the listening audience, I, would just want, I just really want to just reiterate, you know, what I was saying and the, the point that I try to get across to us is that we as a people are the recipients of a vast body of knowledge and examples that we can glean new examples from and develop new knowledge. We have to be open, willing, and humble and highly um, thorough in our approach. And don't quit. And lastly, let's not always talk about what the enemy is going to do to us because this enemy is not invincible. We, we put forth those arguments too much. Oh, the enemy is going to do this. They will sniff that. They're going to do that. We superiorize these people too much. Yes, we do. We superiorize them too much. If we are going to make the type of advances that we need to make, we have to believe more in ourselves and believe in our ability to do it. And we can know what we can do if we look only to ourselves for the examples. That's what I would suggest. And this is what I submit to us. You know, let's do the work. I've been doing this work for over 30 years consistently. I'm not worrying about what the European is doing, what the agent is doing. I know who my enemies are and I know what I'm going to do to move against my enemies. Simple as that. I'm never going to let anybody convince me that we can't move forward. I'm not going to let anybody convince me that we're not moving forward. I'm not listening to any of that. I don't, and, and I don't think... We should keep on saying what we don't have. We have a whole lot. We got to figure out how we can help those who are doing the work. We got to stop always putting forth an argument about what we do not have and talk about what we need. We oftentimes talk about what we need in the face of somebody that's actually doing what you say we need. Come on, Bob. Not even realizing how offensive that could be at times. Like, people are doing this work. Let's stop saying what we need and figure out how you can join in and help. You know, that's what we got to mm -hmm. get to. We got to start thinking more solutionist about this work. Like, how can you help? Are you willing to link up? Are you willing to connect? Are you willing to, 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 to collaborate? That's what this is all about. So those are my, my final words to all of us. Think like a winner and know that you can win because you black and nothing else. Woo, I got to drop a bomb on that, Baba. Baba. Baba, thank you so much for taking time out of your life to be with myself and my listening audience. We give thanks for your time. We give thanks for your energy. We give thanks for your wisdom. We give thanks for your work, right? And so, Baba, we appreciate you. So I say Asante Sana, Madase, Adupe, Majuba. Thank you so much, Baba. I think I say Madupe. It's Adupe and Madupe. It's yeah. both. And so thank you. Adua. I want to say Dua as well, Baba. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And Baba, we got to bring you back. We got to figure out something, Baba, uh, you know, after this series, you know, I'm, I'm going to shine. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to highlight 10 scholars this go around, but we got to do something else, Baba, in the, you know, in the summer, you got to come back on, Baba, and so you can drop some more of that good, got good knowledge. I think you're going to go viral again. I posted some of your clips on IG, and uh, 
you, you upset some of the males, I'll just say that, some of the black males in the community from your uh, presentation, you upset a few of them. And so I'm under the comment section going at a couple of them on IG. So I said, uh oh, this is another viral moment because your last video got up to over 255,000 views. I think it's almost at 260,000. So I said, goodness, Baba's getting ready to, to break the internet again. So anyway, Baba, I'm gonna be posting clips family from Baba's lectures on my IG page. So make sure that you go on to IG and subscribe to my page or follow my page. I'm on IG, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Twitter family, I'm on Facebook. So make sure that you follow, follow me. I don't like saying follow, connect with me on these social media platforms. And also family, make sure that you connect with Baba Emotep. He's on Facebook, he's on Instagram. Make sure that you connect with him and learn from him. I saw that some of the people in the crowd, you said, I need to connect with PLM. Reach out to those brothers. Yes, connect. Let's, yes, connect. That's it, Baba. We got to connect. And please so make connect. sure you can, we say Baba? I say, please connect. Yeah, just connect and come on out to the to the rally, the Race First rally that's going down in Baltimore. You say August the what, Baba? July 29th. Oh, July 29th. July, it's usually, you usually do it in August, Baba, yes, right? I did, I, I did it in August the first couple of years. Um, but I, I can explain it offline to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it. We'll do it. Okay, no, no problem, Baba. So he said July the 29th. Ninth, if you're in the B DMV area, family, be in the building and come support. Meet him in person. I know that he would love it. Baba, peace and black power. I'm gonna make some announcements, and uh, I'm gonna. I just text you, so make sure you check. check just get okay. back with me and let me know, Baba. Okay. All right. All right. Peace and love. Peace. Tell Mama. Tell Mama and the boys. I said thank you so much for okay. sharing you with us tonight. Will do. All right. Peace and love. All right, family. So look, I got a few announcements before I let you go. Before I let go, do, do, do. Come to Ghana with me, family. Come to Ghana with your sister, Dr. Ma'at. I'm going to Ghana from March the 15th to March the 26th. Family be in the building. We're going to travel. I'm traveling to Ghana, my family included. We're going to Ghana uh, with INSA Explorations. And so, family, if you want to be a part of this, if you want to be a part of this journey, it's going to be a journey of a lifetime. And I want the Ma'adi and family to come along with us. So, family, make sure that you reach out to, and I'm going to send you the email. Well, I'm going to put it in the chat. NSA, NSAA, creation at gmail.com. Send an email to Sister Muje. Uh, that's her African given name or Sister Marjorie. Okay, reach out to her for details. Okay, I think she only grabbed like a 32 passenger bus. So those seats are going to go fast. 10 of them are already gone. So if you're interested in going to Ghana with me, going to Ghana with the family, let's do it, family. Okay, reach out to Sister Muje. Reach out to Sister Muje and make sure that you connect with her to get more information. All right. Also, family, make sure that you get your child enrolled in the UACI Summer STEM Camp. All right. I have the, the, the uh, website up. And so I'm going to drop the link in the chat. We got to get our babies involved in STEM. And uh-oh, look who is a, look who are the instructors. Baba Amin and Dr. Oya Edwama'at. All right. So, family, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, you see that we have the registration form. Family, we are finalizing registration this weekend. We are finalizing registration this weekend, family. So make sure that you have your child. You get your child a spot. Okay. We're offering a virtual classroom or a virtual component as well as an in-person component. The in-person component, family, will be... Um, offered in Columbia, South Carolina at the Uhuru Academy uh, International South Carolina campus. And so that'll be in person. And then the virtual component will just be online, okay? It'll be a Zoom meeting and uh, we'll send your child all of the equipment that he or she needs. And there will be instructors engaging with your child online. We only have 30 slots, 15 slots for the virtual component and 15 slots for the in-person component. And they're going fast. So family, please make sure that you sign your child up ASAP. And then lastly, family, be in the building for the first Black Science Fair in Brooklyn, New York. All right. We're trying to raise $5,000. You see that we're already at $3,400. Shout out to Brother Q Butter, who is the mastermind of this and who is spearheading uh, this beautiful, beautiful event, this amazing and powerful event. And so make sure you're in the building. Okay, on June the 10th 
from 2 to 6 p.m. family. Make sure that you're in the building on June the 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you cannot come, make sure that you donate because some of you may say, well, I don't live near New York and getting there is a hassle and blah, 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 blah. Make sure that you donate to the event. You know, we're trying to expose as many black children to STEM as possible and we need your help. We can't do it without you. All right, so make sure that you click the GoFundMe link and donate. Family, I've been going live all week, maybe like three or four times. So I'm going to take a break. I will not be live tomorrow. And I probably won't be live on Sunday. But I will be back live on Tuesday and Thursday of next week. I have the next speaker coming on, Dr. Tareen Wright. And she's going to be going all the way in. So make sure that you join me back here at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday. If you don't catch me on Tuesday, Join me right back here at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, family, on Thursday. Ahuru Sasa, Freedom Now, Abibi Fahodie, African Liberation, Abibi Toomey, Black Power. Peace and love, family. Have a blacktastic weekend.